Hello grade 12s, I hope you're all doing well. Um, today I'm going to give you a lesson on the fertilizer industry. Um, okay, so the first question that I'm going to ask is what is a fertilizer? Well, the fertilizer is anything that you're that are given to a plant to make it grow faster. So it's basically food for a plant. And there is a lot of fertilizer being produced in the world because we have a growing world population. There's so many people in the world. At the moment, we're standing at about 8 billion people in the world. All these people need food to eat. So we need the crops to grow faster. And that is why fertil where fertilizer comes in and why it is such a huge industry in the world. And we don't have enough land available to grow all of this food. So that a little bit of land must be used over and over again. And the, uh, the crops have to grow fast so that the ne next harvest can, can be uh, grown. All right, uh, what is a natural fertilizer? So before fertilizers were produced in factories, uh, humans uh, just took fertilizer from nature. So for example, animal dung, uh, guano, which is bat and bird droppings, ash uh, is a good source of potassium, compost is just dead plant material, and bone meal is just bones that are grinded into a powder and it's a good source of phosphorus. So these are all uh, fertilizers that we can get from nature. But today, of course, uh, fertilizers are mostly uh, produced in factories and they are man-made fertilizers. And that is what we are talking about uh, in this section. Okay, so what is it that plants need from fertilizers? Okay, so I've got uh, four types of minerals that uh, that, that, that are uh, in fertilizer that plants need. So we've got non-mineral. So these are your organic elements. These are not mineral elements. They are not inorganic elements. They are the organic elements. So from organic chemistry, you know that most organic molecules is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It has those three elements in them. And where does the plant get those three elements from? Well, on the left, you can see there is a illustration of carbon dioxide that is being uh, absorbed by the plant through its leaves and also water that is being absorbed by the plant through its roots. So that is where the plant gets CH and O from because carbon dioxide has carbon and oxygen and water has hydrogen and oxygen. All right, and then the next one is the primary mineral. So this is absolutely vital for the plant. The plant will die without N. P and K, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. That is why I've written it in bold because these are the most important and the ones that we are going to discuss in more detail in the next slides. All right, then the secondary minerals are also important to the plant, for example, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur, but it is not as vital as N, P, and K. So the plant will need those, but it will probably not die if it doesn't have enough of those. And then the micronutrients, uh, there's a lot more than just the three that I've given here. I've given you copper, zinc, and iron, but there is a list of about 10 or 15 of them. They are also important to the plant, but uh, the plant doesn't need as much of them as the others. Okay, so what is it about N, P, and K that makes it so vital for the plant? All right, nitrogen is important for the formation of healthy leaves of, the, of a plant. And we know that leaves are important to a plant because th that is where photosynthesis takes place. So without the leaves, the plant will not be able to produce food and it will not grow. Uh, so nitrogen is taken up through the roots in the form of nitrates. Because as I remember, the plant can only take up nutrients if it is dissolved in water. So it has to be an iron, like nitrate, that is taken up through the roots, uh, dissolved in water. Another iron that also contains nitrogen is ammonium. All right, then phosphorus is the next one. Phosphorus is important to the plant for the formation of a healthy root system. And uh, we know that roots are important to a plant because if your plant doesn't have well-developed roots, it will not be able to take up these nutrients from the soil 
and take up water from the soil. So it, uh, the healthier the root system, the healthier the plant. And phosphorus is taken up through the roots in the form of phosphates. PO3, uh, PO4, 3 minus. All right, and then the last one is potassium, K. The K of NPK stands for potassium. And uh, potassium is important for the plant uh, for growth in general, but also for the formation of healthy flowers and fruits. And uh, potassium also prevents diseases in the plant. Uh, and then potassium is taken up in the form of the potassium ion K+. All right, so that is NPK and why they are important to a plant. So on a bag of fertilizer, you will always see this NPK ratio. I'm just going to uh, circle it there for you. You see that ratio there? 6 to 1 to 5, that is the NPK ratio. All right, so the 6 is for nitrogen, the 1 is for phosphorus, and the 5 is for potassium. And then you also see on the bag of fertilizer, there's a number in brackets. In this case, it's uh, 22. So what this means is that 22% of this bag of fertilizer is actual pure fertilizer. The other 78% is just filler. So that is not fertilizer at all. It doesn't contain NPK. Why is it important for there to be a filler? The filler is just there to dilute the fertilizer. It is not so good for the plant to take in pure fertilizer. It will actually poison the plant. So it needs to be diluted with a filler. All right. So in the exam, you're going to get a type of question where they give you an NPK ratio. So in this case, it's 3, 1, 4, and in brackets, 26. And then they ask you to calculate uh, the mass of each Sorry, the mass of each element present in the bag if the total mass of the fertilizer bag is 15 kilograms. All right, so now all you do is you say, okay, I'm going to start with nitrogen. So nitrogen is the three, the first number. So to work out the percentage nitrogen, we're going to take that three and we're going to divide it by the total of the ratio. In other words, if, I, if you say 3 plus 1 plus 4, you add up those three numbers to get 8. All right, now that is the number that you put at the bottom of the fraction times the amount or the percentage of the bag that is actually fertilizer, which is 26. It's the number in brackets. So it's 3 over 8 times 26. That gives you 9,75%. So 9,75% of this bag is actually is actually a nitrogen. You go to phosphorus. The number of phosphorus is 1 over the total of the three numbers, which is 8, times the 26 that is in brackets. So 3,25% of this bag is phosphorus. And then you do the same for potassium. So potassium is 4 over 8 times 36 and gives you 13%. 13% of this bag is uh, potassium. But then they can go on. Instead of you having to work out the percentages, uh, they can ask you to work out the mass of the bag. So all you need to do is you need to take that percentage, the 9,75 for nitrogen, and multiply it with the total mass of the bag, which is 15 kilograms. And you're going to divide it by 100 because uh, we were working with percentages. So I divide it by 100, and then I get 1,46 kilograms of this bag, which is 15, uh, this 15 kilogram bag is actually nitrogen. Then you do the same for phosphorus, and you do the same for potassium. All right, so this calculation is really not that difficult. It's, these calculations are quite easy. All right, so now before some practice questions, just one more thing that I have to discuss, and that is the negative effects of the fertilizers on the environment. Okay, and I've got two for you here. The first one is the blue baby syndrome. I don't know if you've heard of this, but it's, it's a condition in small babies where their blood hemoglobin uh, doesn't uh, transport oxygen 
correctly from their lungs to their cells in their body. Okay, and the cause of blue baby syndrome is nitrates that are in our drinking water. So where does this nitrates come from? From fertilizers. Okay, so the farmers put the fertilizers on their soil to fertilize the crops. It seeps through the soil, ends up in our drinking water that is from the lakes and the dams. All right, and then the second one is eutrophication. So eutrophication is when uh, the fertilizer once again ends up in the dams and the lakes. Uh, when it's, especially when it rains, the fertilizer just seeps through the soil, ends up in the dams and the lakes. And when it uh, gets to the lake, it causes algal blooms. So algae starts growing extremely fast because they love this fertilizer. And because there's such a lot of algae, as we can see in that picture, the bottom there, there's a lake with algae growing on the surface. Uh, they use up all the oxygen in the water to such an extent that there is no oxygen left for other water life, especially animal life like fish and crabs and whatever it is that you have in the water. They die and you end up what they call a dead zone where there's very little animal life uh, in that water. Okay, so I want you guys to please do these two questions, number 9 and number 10, from exercise 33 in your chemistry ebook. All right, and by the way, your chemistry ebook consists of two books, so this is in the second. Do those two questions, and in my next video, I will uh, do corrections for those two questions. Thank you for watching my video. I'll see you guys soon.